Right, now we've talked about particulate filters and all about those, let's talk all about vapour filters. So you will be able to see hopefully on the camera that there is a bit of a particulate filter in the front there. As I was saying before, all NBC and CBRN filters have a particulate filter in them. That's the front layer, you don't have the charcoal, and then you have the back layer which is another particulate filter, although normally not as good one, a smaller one, to keep the charcoal in. So. Particulate, vapor, uh, particulate filters block the particulates from coming in, dust and etc. as I said in the last video about these. So what do the vapour filters do? Or the charcoal blocks vapour. So that's easy to understand. How does it do it though? This is the um, more interesting thing. So this I'll have talked about before, but it's interesting to actually talk about it properly. So in the filter of activated charcoal, activated charcoal is basically very, very, has a very dense surface area for something that's not that large. So what that means is it's got lots of room for stuff to stick to it. So the logic behind activated carbon is once you've got, or charcoal, however you want to say it, you have this sort of layer, the vapours come through and oxygen doesn't react to it, air doesn't react to it, normal air. Normal air can pass through it. Where you have more nasty chemicals, <clears throat> the vapours from those stick to the uh, actual charcoal, it's called adsorption. Not absorption, like, you know, if you had some kitchen roll and you put it in water, it absorbs the water adsorption it sticks the outside of the charcoal the charcoal's still there but the outside of it gets coated with the chemicals so that's called adsorption now what makes this more complicated is the fact that normal activated charcoal of the most sort of i guess generic variety as far as i'm aware is only certified to stop normal vapors or organic vapors lots of chemical weapons and industrial gases are not just organic vapors so what they have to do is modify the charcoal or get specialist kinds of charcoal to stop more kinds of vapors so if you went and just bought an organic um, organic vapor filter i think that's the brown colored ones on abec they just about you know stop um you, there's a big list you can find it i just suggest you google organic vapors and you'll get a massive list but most of them aren't necessarily industrial gases, it's, you know, naturally occurring gases and some, um, you know, like industrial chemicals. Once you get to um, inorganic gases, such as chlorine and things that are often weaponized, uh, some of those filters won't stop it. I have the feeling they probably actually would make a difference, but obviously what you want is something that's the right kind of charcoal to absorb uh, chlorine and stuff like that in organic vapors. But there's more chemical weapons than just organic and inorganic vapors. So this is why I like the ABEC filter system, because on an ABEC filter, it tells you exactly what it does. Organic vapours, inorganic vapours, acid gases, and ammonia sort of gases. So, how they, how do they then get, you know, the normal charcoal they've put in to stop the other kind of vapours, stopping those other two? They impregnate the charcoal. So what that means is, normally certain types of metal, uh, how you have a catalytic converter in your car, which is, I think, is platinum in those, it's a similar sort of process. They put a couple of other, you know, precious or semi-precious metals in, not because of their material value, but because they do interesting things to stuff that touches them. So you'd have maybe platinum in there. Not you couldn't really cut open gas mask filters and you know make money by grinding down the platinum. It wouldn't work that way. But um, you know, chromium is a big one because lots of people on here have a chromium phobia. They think it's the same thing as asbestos. It's really not chromium is in there to save your life the reason they put chromium in the filters is certain you know types of vapor gases are neutralized by the chromium or stick to the chromium they can't come out you know the other end of the filter if there's chromium impregnated charcoal so that's why it's in there so basically what they do is i assume it's all done with machines not people with a needle injecting every little grain of charcoal but through some sort of machining process when they fill these filters up in the factory you have the charcoal is treated with certain maybe chemicals and precious metals, whatever, and then it's packed into the filter in the um, sort of vapour layer. And then how it works is, as I said, I'm not massively big on the science, but I can understand it from this is how it works when you use a gas mask level. When the vapours come through, all the different things mixed in with the charcoal and the charcoal, the gases adsorb to that, and your clean air comes through the top of the filter. So... Just to recap, your particulate level uh, layer of the filter is at the front, as you see. If you have a P3 one, all the dust and various bits like that stick to that. And that would, the same would be for like bacteria, anthrax spores, irradiated dust, you know, anything like that. They stick to the front. Um, so when this eventually clogs up, you won't be able to breathe, but, you know, they stick to the front. Then what happens is the vapours get to the charcoal, and then the vapours stick to the charcoal and all the stuff in it. 
and then the clean air comes out the other side. So you've got a process where you have all this nasty stuff coming in this way, it all gets stuck in the filter and then can't come out that way. And as I've said many times, if you are trying to buy filters, the easiest way of doing it, rather than trying to find CBRN NBC filters that are in date, especially because different brands of NBC and CBRN filters actually stop and don't stop different things, which makes them quite frustrating if you were thinking of using it as a generic survival filter. What you want to look for is ABEC P3 filters, so you've got all the different ABEC letters, which means it stops different kinds of vapours, and then the P3, which means it has a particulate level 3 filter at the front, stops particulates. So that filter would do absolutely everything you need, and you can buy them from some hardware stores. So you, you can get ABEC P3 filters in a 40mm form that will go on the NATO masks, no problem. And if you want to get those, as some hardware stores do it, you have to research what's near you, because people often ask me in the comments, find one that will ship to me. I don't know where you live, um, you know, and all this sort of stuff. I don't know how much you're willing to spend, and I don't frankly have the time to hunt down filters for every single person that's asking me for them. So, you know, as said, what you need to do is um, look in your local hardware stores or online. You can Google it yourself, it's not that hard. Look for ABEC P3 filters that are sold near you. 3M do ones, but I think with 3M you have to buy the ABEC one and then a P3 thing that you put on with a retainer and it sticks to the front of it that way. Um, but, you know, it does the same thing. But, yeah, you, for some people it might be better, easier, you know, rather than buying an army surplus gas mask, just to buy a new 3M full face mask, which is around £60 to £100, you know, $60 to $100, that kind of price range for a brand new one. You get one of those, the full face ones, and then what you can do is you can just simply, from a hardware store, whenever you need new filters, buy sealed ABEC and P3 filters and just assemble them yourself and you're good to go. You know, no messing about trying to find filters that haven't yet expired at a reasonable price that are 40mm ones. But you can do it through 40mm ones and I've got some that are in date. So, there you go. That's how... You know, that section works, that is how a vapour filter adsorbs stuff so you can breathe clean air.